your implant crowns don't seat. I'll tell you why. If you're placing a dental implant, and at the time of placing the implant, you place a transmucosal healing abutment. The transmucosal healing abutment typically comes in a, in a narrow, a regular, and a wide profile. And most people usually sit, uh, place a regular healing abutment onto their implant. What that means is, is that when you take your impression, if you're lucky, you have more attached or keratinized gingiva around your implant. Well, that's a good thing, right? Because you want a collar of keratinized gingiva around your implant because it's the tough stuff, right? It's like a callus. It's the good stuff, right? You don't want mucosa that's stretchy, okay? So you go, well, well, okay, that's good. But then when my crown comes back, the crown doesn't seat. I go to put it in the mouth and there's too much soft tissue in the way, right? And some people, they, they really think this is a bad thing. And it's not at all. This is a beautiful thing. To have all of that tissue around your implant is gorgeous. Now, how should you proceed to get the implant to seat? And it's very, very simple. You simply get the patient numb. You do a little injection right around the top of the right around the top of the implant at the platform of the implant. Get the papilla in that area numb. You take a 15 blade, remove the healing abutment. And then make a crustal incision, slightly cheated towards the palate, and that's it. You don't have to elevate the tissue or anything. You're just going to you're going to separate the circumferential fibers with a crustal incision, slightly to the palate, and then you're going to take take your prosthesis and place it into the mouth. And as you screw it into position, because the prosthesis, if the implant was placed properly. We'll have an emergence profile that looks like this. It's going to look like a heart shape coming out with a nice S curve. It's going to push the tissue away. So it's going to act like a wedge, just like if you were chopping a, a, a block of wood. So when you put it in, as you tighten the screw, the screw will pull it into position. It will push the tissue out. The tissue will blanch a little bit, and it will move that tissue into the vestibule on the, on the buckle side. And so this is why we, when we published the paper on this a number of years ago, we called it the apical gingival displacement technique, the AGD technique. And what we're doing is we're apically displacing into the vestibule this band of keratinized gingiva so that we get a nice, beautiful three millimeter band or more on the facial of your implant. And that's it. The blanching goes away in a couple of minutes and the patient isn't bleeding when they're leaving because when you place the implant, it puts compression on the tissue and there's no bleeding. And it's a lovely thing. So, and you don't have to give them a lot of anesthetic so they're not numb forever and definitely don't have to give them a block. Just give them a little injection as an infiltration and they'll be fine. So this is called the AGD technique. The paper's on my website. So if you want to download it, it's free to read. And we use it all the time, all the time, because typically what we do is we have an abundance of tissue. Now, there is another way around it. And the other way around is not so good. The other way around it is this. You tell the laboratory to copy the emergence profile of your stock abutment. Okay, that is a, that's a, a less than ideal outcome. And let me explain why. Well, if you've got the implant deep enough, you've got the opportunity to come up with a nice, beautiful S curve on your emergence profile. So as you come up, you come up to the, to the tooth, and then you've got the crown, and then it looks like a heart, right? So we love the heart. So that's the shape we're looking for, right? Well, when you use a stock abutment, what ends up happening is the stock abutment comes up straight like this, and then you've got a very acute change in the profile of the crown. So you're going to come up like this, and then all of a sudden you're going to have this mushroom on a stick, okay? And the mushroom on the stick works. You won't have to cut the patient because it'll go down without compressing the tissue whatsoever. But the problem is what? It's a food trap, right? So now... You've got, on the mesial and distal of the tooth, you've got this massive undercut, which is a food trap. And you'll deliver this, and the patient, the first time they floss, they go, they floss, and then I go like this. I floss, I go like that. And I'm like, what is going on? There's, a, like, there's no tooth structure underneath the crown. He goes, oh, yeah, that's how implants are. You try to tell them that that's how it is, and they don't like it. So that's the first thing they don't like. But second thing is they're constantly catching food in there because you don't have the embrasure filled with tooth structure. You have a crown sitting on top of a very narrow neck. So we call that an ET. Okay, and although we loved ET in the movies, we don't like ETs when we see radiographs. So if we have skinny necks and mushrooms on a stick, we call that an ET, and that's not what you want. So the reason why some people will tell the laboratories 
to make them that way is because they don't want to get the patient numb. And so if you don't want to get the patient numb and you don't want to make an incision, that makes a lot of sense. But that's not in the patient's best interest. If your implant is placed properly at the, right, the proper depth, give them a beautiful emergence profile so that it comes up with, a, with a, like a beautiful third order equation or an S curve comes up and, and has that beautiful Coke bottle sides and up to the crown. And that way you'll fill the embrasures with enough tooth structure that will support the papilla and it will be very easy for them to clean and it will feel very natural for them. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe for more.